Welcome back to the show, Marvels. How in the heck are you? I mean, how, Dana and I are back. How in the, yeah, Dana? <laughs> how in the, how in the, I'm realizing that I know how many windows are behind you. I'm like, how do I know that you have 12 windows? Because you're I, you, Dana. I counted them over and over and I over. I know, that's like part of a door, Dana. Do you see? It's part of a door. Yeah. Yep. Don't even get me started about my setup. You know, I used to have this. No, I love that. Yeah. But yeah. Amazing. It, it just sort of and... modeling my autistic thing as you're introducing yourself. I'm like, oh yeah, I know how many windows are back there. Yeah. 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 That, yeah and you're right. Of course you're right. Um, Dana and I just, uh, before we came on, we um, just, you know, f flinged a slew of curse words um, just to, just because as we're, we're talking about our topic. I Dana want to do I like the guy hot. from a Christmas, the dad hot. from a Christmas story where they, he says like, not a finger. So I'll try to say that instead of something else. Well, why don't we'll, we'll get really, why don't we get really um, creative with curse words today? Um, okay. Today's topic, Dana, is um, higher education. <laughs> there, the, hence the swearing. You know, <laughs> hence the swearing. Um, we just want to say, Marvels, thank you so much for your interactions. Yeah. Um in our comment section, we read them all. Yep. We may not respond to you directly, but we read them all. And um, this comment is, our topic today is directly influenced by this comment. And, yep. you know, um, talking about accommodations in higher education and disclosure and it is, it's a, it's, it's a great, it's a great topic. And Dana is particularly positioned. Heated. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> to talk about Heated this. And position. Yeah. <laughs> because Dana does teach yeah. in higher education. Um, yeah. I'm helping students on my end, um, access accommodations, you know, the poultry three that you can get, um, I'm helping them and uh, from my end. And so we've got some different perspectives on this, but maybe Dana, you want to talk about higher education and neurodiversity or yeah, the lack think, of acceptance of neurodiversity? You bet. Yeah. And for those of us that don't sort of know the lingo of this, uh, higher education is in the U.S. beyond high school. And you can get accommodations, you know, K through 12. It's like built into the system. Um, and then uh, college and beyond um, it's harder, right? It, it, it's different in all different countries. Europe, I think, depending on the country, does a much better job than us. I've heard people in New Zealand and Australia do a better job than us in terms of higher ed accommodations. <clears throat> but the idea is, this is that equity idea that we've talked about before, where if someone is neurodivergent and they need like more time or need a quiet room or um, whatever it is to be able to do the same thing that a neurotypical would do in the United States that falls under uh, the American with Disability Act. And so you have to be able to get those accommodations in the classroom. Now, what you do have to do, though, what you do do, that's not a swear word. What you do have no, to do. No, do do. <laughs> but you did say do do. Yeah, yeah, We're so mature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What you have to do, though, to get those accommodations, I mean, um, my students will, um, over the years, would, where I used to teach, we, we didn't have a like an on-ground disability office, which was against the law we were supposed to. I'm not going to tell you where I used to be. It's out of business now. Surprise. Um, <laughs> but students would come to me and say, um, I'm a, I have ADHD or whatever it was, and I, I'm requesting, you know, extra time on the exam. And I would say, oh, great. Okay, let's do that. Um, but that requires that someone like outs themselves, right? So the way it's supposed to happen and the way it does happen, we do have a dedicated disability support services office at Antioch now. That student can go to the disability support services. They coordinate with that student in terms of like getting a doctor's note or something that verifies that they need this accommodation. Um, and then they send like, so every semester at the beginning of a, or a quarter we have, 
I get an email from the disability support services office and it'll have the student's name on it and it will list the, <clears throat> the requested or the required accommodations. It doesn't say like this person's autistic or this person's ADHD. It's, it's, you, you're, it's actually against the law to disclose what the issue is to the professors, which makes it sticky if you're the one doing the asking and not going through the support office. And it'll say, these are the, um, these are the accommodations that the student needs, right? And then I have to like hit a button that says, yes, I saw these. So, it, 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 and that's a system that's built to like make the legalities of it kosher. But what I see as a, as a person there who does honor those from a really fundamental level, because they're so important to me for obvious reasons. <clears throat> um, and I've gone out of my way to kind of go above and beyond and create my own system for acknowledging those things. So I'll get that. I'll say to disability support services, yes, I'll do this. And then I'll send an email to those students saying, here are the you know, three requirements for the course this quarter. Um, I'm proposing you get one extra week for this, you know, extra time for this, whatever it is. And then the student can say, yes, that plan, like the articulated plan for that class looks great, right? Um, and then I've, I've shared that with my fellow professors. I've shared that in other programs. And there's only been a couple of people in my program that I hear back from students that do that. Other professors don't. They kind of take a passive approach, which is for that. They know that the DSS office said they have to have accommodations. But then they wait for the student to like come to them at any point in the, in the quarter and say, oh, I do need to invoke my, I need extra time, which is really kind of there, I did it. You're gonna have to do the bleepy. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crappy. Sorry, I just flew right out. Um, it, because now you have to be like standing there with your professor saying, I need this extra time. And for someone that needs the accommodations, that requires a certain amount of um, timing and executive functioning. And if they're already stressed out because they need the extra time, you're really you're gonna ask them to come to you like after class in front of everybody and saying, I need that extra week for my paper. It's so stupid. So you do, and there's been things written about this. In higher ed, there is a systematic bias against these things um, rooted in this idea, false idea of this person can't do the job then that they're studying for if they need this, which the workplace also falls under DSS or disability law, so they can. Now, I would imagine, and I've heard from my wife who works at UW and works within the information school, they're really good about this. And they teach librarians basically over there. And they're all into high tech and digitizing and, and it's all about accessibility of information. That's what's called the information school. Um, ha she says half the professors there and half the support staff and probably the majority of the students that are going into this field are all neurodivergent. So they're all like, yeah, it's all good. And they really do it really well, right? And I'm not saying they do it well there because it's a large university. I think it's because of that discipline in that particular college, right? Tech and those kinds of areas, I think probably there's more accommodation because people's, it's, it's in that field. In our field in psychology, the bias against is so huge. All you have to do is read some journal articles, and we've talked about this before, journal articles in our field and how marginalizing and um, just mean the language is disability and deficit yeah. and all this language and this kind of stuff. Um, so I have actually heard from fellow faculty of, oh, this person, you know, if they can't do it in the program, how are they going to do it in real life? And I'm like, well, they're going to modify their lives to be a psychologist, obviously they may not do it the way you're gonna do it. And disability law says you have to give them that leg up so they have at least that equal footing as the person who's neurotypical. And then if they can't do it with the leg up, yes, that could be a problem. But what I see is people saying they're resistant even to the leg up and saying, you know, do we really have to make these changes for this person? Do we have to move around this person? Psychology, it, it, and it doesn't make any sense to me. We were, we're in psychology. We're supposed to understand this stuff, right? And there's other fields that are doing this flawlessly. You, we were talking before we came on, and I see this a lot in my posts on Awake, where people will say, oh, my God, thank you for um, being, a, um, being out about this as a, as a licensed, board-certified, by the way, psychologist, because I'm in a grad program, and I'm terrified of them finding out. 
Yeah. Or I told a professor yeah. about it and they've just blankly looked at me and said, well, you can't do this then. Right. And, and I have a, a bunch of neurodivergent students and I've had graduate neurodivergent students, which is awesome because we need more of those in the field to understand neurodivergent clients. My, my, almost my entire caseload now is neurodivergent. And they'll say, you just get me in a way that, which makes sense, right? If I'm a person of color, is my therapist as a white person gonna understand that lived experience as well as a therapist of color? No. For me, there's only so much I can try to understand what it's like to be a person of color, right? And it can never quite get there. And so yeah. there's always gonna be that, that chasm versus I'm a neurodivergent person, I can yep. totally get it, right? So we need more of us out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, here, here's the piece too, right? What, what, is, what, are, what are some of our base assumptions, right? Yeah. Like this is the whole heart of the neurodiversity movement. Mm -hmm. This idea that neurological variability is what is normal. Va yeah. Neurological variability is normal. Part not of having normal a neuro, yeah. right. Yeah. And not having a neuro majority and a neuro minority. This right. kind of, this is, you know, that's how, that that's the problem. There's, there's some problem there, right? There's some problem in the way in which we, how do you define disability, you know, mm -hmm. are, and, and most of us that I think are in this place of support and acceptance really define disability through the social lens versus the biomedical lens, right? Your disability yeah. is in the social model of disability. Your disability looks better or worse depending on your environment and the supports that you receive. Exactly. Verse, right? So, you know, yeah. that that there's a, the example of, you know, maybe someone who's visually impaired. You know, if yeah. you don't have the bumps on the road, the the braille on the on on the let's say um elevator, yeah. the yeah. um audible things at the crosswalk, you know, that person's gonna look less independent, less yeah. or more disabled, if you will, right? Right. I, I think the other here's here's what like honestly chaps me like hmm. there is a difference between approval and access right yeah. i can be approved for these x accommodations um which by the way in the united states if you got any accommodations and at the high school level that fell under a different legal structure right that yeah. falls under idea yeah. uh the individuals with disabilities education act mm -hmm. then we and and in that model all of the support or all of the responsibility and accountability is rested upon the adults, the mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. and not the student. Yeah. And then you move, you graduate, you, mo you move to falling under ADA accommodations under the ADA. Uh, and now all of the burden of, mm -hmm. of advocacy falls on you. Yeah. Okay. So there's that one piece. How about if you come from high school with 40 accommodations and then you hit into college, which under the ADA, honestly, there's only three main accommodations in the collegiate setting. What do we know yeah. those to be? A note taker, uh, yeah. extended time, right? And maybe taking your test in a different location. Kind of yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then barring like visual or hearing impairments, you know, you could have things brailled or audiobooks, but that's really the, the, the extent of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And now you need people to... I mean, Dana, I've heard worse in regards to accessibility because I think it really always comes down to accessibility, right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter that I got approved for it. But here in California, there are mm -hmm. some schools, which shall go nameless, <laughs> that, okay, let's say you get you get approved for um, a note taker as an accommodation. Yeah. Guess what that person has to do? They have to find their own note taker in class and oh. ask them to take notes. How about this one? Some teachers require that you advocate for the accommodation every time you need it. So every time you take a test, every time you need a note taker. Um, I which my they're clients, not supposed to do, by the way. That's that's illegal to uh, do that. I mean, okay. but they get away with it constantly, right? Of course, because my clients are like, one, I don't necessarily want to disclose. I don't know these people. I have a hard yeah. enough time socially. Yeah, yeah. And so guess what happens? 
We get no right. accommodations, even though, and now it looks like the student doesn't care because you've been approved yeah. by DSPS yeah. and now you don't. Yeah. It this reminds is, me of I, a, this I is had not a, good. Yeah. I had a deaf student many, many years ago and she had a signer and you said someone uh -huh. did sign in the class. That reminds me almost like the note taker thing. Right. And yeah. we had to pay for it. We had to provide it. How is it different yeah. with note taking? And for me, I don't know about you, but if I ever had to miss a class and I just had a friend take notes, oh, I don't the understand their notes because it's like unique to your brain versus someone who's yeah. trained to do that, which would be the analogy would be like someone who knows ASL. But yeah, that's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. Or even, you know, um, I, I think that, and this is so dependent upon the professor or the instructor, yes. you know, so for yeah. you, Dana, you're like, hey, let's have this kind of private conversation about mm -hmm. what the support looks like and, do and it what's going to fit you. Yeah. 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 That's right. Not in front of people yep. privately. Right. We don't need to disclose. Right. This is, yep. this is important. Okay. Yep. Um, but how many professors, the, the way that a student moves into or utilizes their accommodations is professor or instructor driven. Yeah. Full stop. Yep. If you have an instructor that is not friendly in this way, or heaven forbid, not organized. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's those part students of the are sunk. Yeah. Yeah. Sunk. Or they don't. It's not a priority for them. It's clearly a priority for me, and they they sort of treat yeah. it cavalierly, like, oh well, they requested it, it'll be fine. No, not really. I mean, and again, the thing that just always, I just don't understand how psychologists don't get it. But then it goes back to that thing that we've yeah. talked about before, whereas the majority of psychologists don't understand neurodivergence now. They don't understand how yeah. the DSM has been collapsed and all of what's in it and how different those things are. Yeah, makes me crazy. You so know, it's not in your head. Those of you that are listening, no. you're not doing anything wrong. Um, what I have had told students if they have another professor is they say, well, I, should I go back and talk to that professor again? And I say, no, go back to the DSS office because the people that we have in that office are awesome. And then they'll be mama bear for you. You shouldn't have to do that, but go back to them and tell them you're not getting your needs met. It's terrible. Yeah. I mean, again, I think what sucks is that the burden of responsibility for advocacy falls on the person that's already struggling. Yes, right. And exactly. that is a reflection of our healthcare system in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Advocacy is the only thing that results in rights being um, respected and yeah. 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 and where, and you know, you have to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. And most of my clients just don't have the bandwidth for it. I mean, they're struggling yeah, as it is. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, uh, it, this really makes me crazy. You know, if you're out there and you're yeah. in a grad program, um, in any way, shape or form, I mean, like we've heard this, like one of our, one of our Marvels was saying that they were like a communication science um, which, which makes me laugh because if you're going into like a, a augmentative communication, alternative communication, uh, you know, I, you know, you'd think that these people would we have the assumption <laughs> and the mindset and the framework for diversity and acceptability, um, acceptance, but that's just not the case. It's just um, ableism. They want, they want to yeah. have people doing that work to be able-bodied and they're saying you can't do this if you're not. And it's just straightforward ableism. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, this is the problem with understanding what equity truly is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and Dana and I often go back to the, to this image. I don't have it on me, but, um, but this image where it's like the three boxes, the three mm -hmm. different heights of people, they're watching a baseball game. Everyone gets a box, let's just say, cause that is what's equal. Yeah. The same size, box. but no. right. The same size box, the very, very tall person now just who already could see over the fence now mm -hmm. can see more. I mean, like he's just has a higher vantage point. The yes. person that could barely, you know, kind of see over the fence. Okay. Might be more comfortable, but the short person, which, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. standing at a, at a cool five one. So I can, I can relate to this, <laughs> you know, still can't see over the fence. Yeah. Right, right, no, right. No, equitab yeah. equitabil equitability is that the tall person doesn't get a box yeah. and the short person gets two. Like, yeah, exactly. Because that's yeah. what is – so equal is not necessarily um, – Equitable. Equitable. Yeah, yeah that's equitable. right. Equitable. Those right. are two different things, two different right. ideas that 
I don't think we get. Um, yeah. And I think the other thing too is um, this, the question in the comments was, you know, why they're okay with me until they have to be held accountable, until it gets written down, until there's, you know, legal requirements to fulfill. Why is yeah. that? Yeah. Why yeah. is that? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yep. And even then, oftentimes there's like, well, they, you know, they can't do this, this barrier here, they can't do it. It's like, well, if you gave them a taller box, I'm pretty sure they could. Yeah. Well, and that is truly the definition of, of an accommodation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that this person could fulfill that X. With that. Uh, yeah. With that with because of their disability. Yeah. And it has to be, you know, it's reasonable and customary is sort of some of the language that the disability law has, but you're right. Yeah. They have to be able to do it with the accommodation. So for example, I'm using a silly example here and it's totally not, you know, duh, but it, it'll illustrate it. It doesn't matter what you do for someone who's blind, they should not be a heart surgeon. Right? Yeah. Probably not yeah. a good idea. I mean, that, and that's the, that's the degree to which it's reasonable and customary. Does that mean that person couldn't do a different type of medicine? Maybe they could, but surgery, maybe not. A, and that's what we're talking about. Does that person with that help, does it raise them to that level of equality with someone else for that job? And they should be able to do it with that accommodation. Yeah. And the bias against that's so big in our field. It's really, I just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, Dana, Dana and I struggle with this, um, even with bumping into our, our colleagues in our everyday mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Um, and the best thing that we can do is continue to talk about it, mm -hmm. raise awareness about it, swear about it, <laughs> swear about it and do it over and over yeah. and over. And, you know, I don't think Dana and I are, are here saying this is, you know, we are, we are absolutists. We're mm -hmm. not here to say that. What we are here to do though, is to talk about issues that we're seeing, to bring mm -hmm. awareness to them and to, to say, what is our responsibility Yeah, in this? Yep. And to just make you feel not alone if you're yeah. going through this and you, you know, choosing that hard route of keeping your head down and just trying as hard as you can, just know that you can get to the other side. Yeah. There are those of us out there that will welcome you to the field and just yeah. know you're not alone. Yeah. Yes, we need you in the field. We need mm -hmm. we need different thinkers. Yeah. Um and by the way, grad school did not prepare me necessarily oh, for the no. work that I do today as a psychologist clinically. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Did my clinical rotations help me with that? Sure. They did. Yeah. Did did the history of psychology help me with that? I mean, it helps me answer some questions on Jeopardy. But it helps I, me know what not to do because historically <laughs> it's been very bad. Like don't have sex with your clients and don't put them in a mock prison experiment and see what happens. I mean, there, yeah, we learned. Or maybe that, phrenology so is yeah. like old school and maybe we shouldn't follow. I don't know. Like, you know, so, yeah. so for those of you out there that, that resonate with this, you're, you're in higher education, college, grad school, right? Um, don't stop, you know, Utilize your supports, lean into your supports, lean into your DSPS, DSS, whatever your disability services are um, at your college. Yeah. Grab an advocate, you know, there's mm -hmm. advocates mm -hmm. out there to help with this. Um, know yourself uh, and know that it's okay to get help um, where you need mm -hmm. to get help. Maybe writing is really, really hard for you and mm -hmm. having a writing, some writing support could be really helpful. That's right. um, you know, things like that. Like, don't give up on that. Um, you unfortunately are in a place where the field and our society is not mm -hmm. fully embracing here of, of neurodivergence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said. only swore once, Dana. That's wow. pretty good. Yeah. My mom would be. I mean, proud. I'll have to go back and, and find <laughs> it. But every time you swear, you put your hand up to your mouth. So, um, it'll oh, be so you can, you can find it that uh -huh. way. Yeah. There I'll just go. scrub it that way. <laughs> Marvels, thank you for being in this community. Thank you for supporting each other. If you want to put any words of encouragement yeah. to other Marvels in this community and you are in this position, please do. Yeah. Please do. We love you. Thank you for being here. We'll uh, see you in the next episode. Bye, Bye everyone. Everybody.